Hey guys, today I'm so glad to answer an important and interesting question that is often asked by new Hadoop learners or aspiring Hadoop developers. And the question is, what are the biggest challenges a Hadoop developer faces in his day-to-day -day job? That's an excellent question. And let's look at the answer. To start with, Hadoop is a lot different from other software tools or technologies. Why I say that? Because let's say you are an Oracle developer. You have to be very good at writing optimized SQL and PL SQL and must be fluent in ETL operations, etc., all within the boundaries of the Oracle software. In contrast, if you look at Hadoop, its ecosystem is vast, meaning a Hadoop environment is not just made up of Hadoop, it's made up of many other tools working together. So just knowing basic concepts like HDFS and MapReduce is not going to cut it in a real Hadoop environment. Not only you have to understand HDFS and MapReduce, you have to understand the concepts in depth. Additionally, you need to understand and know to use different file formats. You need to know how to troubleshoot and debug issues and optimize your MapReduce jobs for performance. And also you need to know about different single point of failures in Hadoop architecture and how to address them. And if that's not enough, you have to know about the tools like Apache Big and Hive, not just on a very high level, but in depth. Let's talk about each challenge in detail now. Day-to-day -day big data problems that we are trying to solve in real Hadoop environments are complex and unique. And they all require custom solutions. Implementing custom solutions require a deep understanding of concepts and most of the time out-of-the-box solutions would not work. So we need Hadoop developers to be very familiar with writing custom input formats, writables and output formats etc. Most often we see fresh Hadoop learners and developers lack the skills required to provide custom implementations and their exposure in writing custom input formats, writable output formats are very limited. They are comfortable with basic concepts, but when it comes to providing custom solutions, they struggle. We understand this is a real problem, and that is why in Hadoop and Real World course, we start with the basics, but we just don't stop there. We go deeper and dissect every single component and provide a rich understanding of every single concept. For example, in our dissecting MapReduce components lesson, we dissect each phases and components in MapReduce. And that is the easy part, but we'll go in detail to explain the differences between an input split, a block, and individual records. Concepts like these are often ignored and most Hadoop learners fail to understand these concepts. All projects that we go over in this course are hand-picked and designed to explain complex topics like custom formats, writables, etc. For example, if you look at our Time Machine project where we simulate a use case that was implemented at New York Times. In this project, we convert a lot of text files to PDF files in a distributed fashion using MapReduce. This use case cannot be implemented with out-of-the-box offerings from Hadoop. So we had to create custom input, output formats, and writables to implement the use case. Being a Hadoop developer is fun and rewarding in many different ways, but the job can get very stressful very quickly. You'll really feel the pressure when things don't work as planned, like an outage of the cluster, or troubleshooting a failing or long-running jobs. Especially when your business users expect an ETA and your boss is behind you asking the status every five minutes. I gotta tell you, it's not a fun situation. So the bottom line is, you cannot survive as a Hadoop developer without understanding how to troubleshoot, debug, and optimize the jobs. That is why we have a dedicated chapter in this course for troubleshooting, debugging, and will go in great detail in looking at MapReduce tuning properties and offer a deep understanding of how join works and will look at several ways to optimize joins in Apache Big and Hype. As I was saying before, problems you deal in Hadoop require custom solutions. The challenge actually starts with the file formats. Very rarely, Hadoop developers in real Hadoop environments deal with plain text file formats. Even if they did, they will be looking at nested structures like JSON or XML. Most of the times, as a Hadoop developer, you will have to deal with binary types and binary file formats. 99% of the time, we see Hadoop learners are only used to working with text file format in Hadoop, which is simply not going to help in a real Hadoop job. 
Hence, in the course, we will look at file formats ranging from JSON, XML, and we'll also look at file formats that deal with binary types like sequence files and Avro. Here is an interesting use case of what we will see in the course. We'll see how you can write a dataset using Python and how you can read the dataset using Java by leveraging a file format named Avro. Most challenging times in a real job are when you have a Hadoop production cluster which is non-functional. This is when Hadoop developers and administrators get woken up in the middle of the night to bring the Hadoop cluster back to its functional state. I myself was in this situation twice. Those are some exciting times. As a Hadoop developer, you will not be asked to fix a broken cluster, but it is definitely a good idea to know about the failures and how to deal with them. Hadoop has a couple of single point of failures, so we need to have a good idea of those failure points. In this course, we have a dedicated chapter to go in detail about the architecture. In addition to the most basic type of nodes like data node and name node, we'll learn about secondary name node, checkpoint and backup nodes in detail. We'll also talk about high availability configuration. This way, you get a complete picture of the Hadoop architecture. As you probably know already, Apache Big and Hive are the two most tools widely used in real Hadoop environments. Since these tools offer an alternative to traditional MapReduce programming, Hadoop developers are expected to know these tools with the ability to customize them as you could do with traditional MapReduce programming. Most Hadoop learners know Pig and Hive, but not to the extent needed in a real Hadoop environment. They most often fail to understand or know how to customize these tools like writing a pig load function or know to use these tools with different file formats, etc. Hence, in this course, you will see how to write custom load functions. We'll talk about SERDI in Hive and we'll also see how to use Pig and Hive with different file formats like sequence files, Avro and compressed files. Furthermore, we'll also see how joins work behind the scenes and how to optimize joins with Pig and Hive. This course is a living course, meaning we want to keep the course updated continuously and students of the course are given an opportunity to actually vote on the next topic that should be covered in the course. So we can provide value based on our students' expectations and demands. That sounds great, right? Lastly, this is a challenge that is not faced by a Hadoop developer in his day-to-day -day job, but this is a challenge faced by new Hadoop learners, so it is definitely worth mentioning. Most Hadoop learners use a virtual image to practice Hadoop. A real Hadoop environment is a multi-node distributed environment, and a virtual image simulates a single node Hadoop installation bundled in a simulated software. Most of the time, learners will have a hard time even running the virtual image in their personal laptop or desktop because it takes up a lot of space and will need at least 8 GB of RAM. Even if they successfully run it, it is just not the same as a real multi-node Hadoop cluster. Practicing Hadoop using a virtual image is like learning swimming on the floor. It is just not one and the same. So for that reason, for every single student of the Hadoop in Real World course, we provide free access to a real 3-node Hadoop CDH 5.4 cluster on Amazon Cloud. So no more dealing with clunky virtual images. Last but not least, we understand that students are sick and tired of word count examples and boring projects. So we have included some exciting and interesting projects in our course to help students understand several key concepts. When you sign up for the course, you get two bonuses. The first bonus will help you while you learn Hadoop and the second bonus will help you once you complete the course. Bonus number one. How you can learn to play a guitar without a guitar, right? Similarly, when you learn Hadoop, you need to practice on a real multi-node cluster. Learning Hadoop with a packaged virtual image is like learning to play a guitar with a violin. It's just not the same. When you sign up for this course, you will get a personal account to access a real 3-node Hadoop cluster hosted on Amazon Cloud. Bonus number two, Hadoop Developer Interview Guide is an excellent interview guide from BigDataInterviewQuestions.com which has over 100 interview questions that were asked in real Hadoop interviews. When you sign up for this course, we will give you a 50% discount for the guide. Even better, sign up for the course and write us a honest review and we will give you the guide for free. 
Our goal with Hadoop Developer and Real World course is to teach aspiring Hadoop developers all the skills necessary to survive real Hadoop production environments with confidence. With an extensive course coverage and bonuses like free cluster access and free Hadoop Developer Interview Guide, it is an easy decision. Go ahead and enroll in Hadoop Developer and Real World course. To know more about the course, visit hadoopinrealworld.com developer. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you inside the course.